I am your host, Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. This is a show where we break down your favorite stories with two people who usually have no context for what it is and uh, it, it, it fosters some interesting conversation today. We're talking about Giant Size X-Men number one, which I'm not going to ruin by pulling out of a box or bag. Mm. I'm just going to use this, this collection here, which has many more stories. When they say Giant Size X-Men, was it the length of the book or did it come in like an oversized comic? Both. So they, there, was a, there was a whole series of giant size. That's actually. right. Uh, in ah. fact, uh, there's, of course, Giant Size Man-Thing. Oh. Which they deliberately titled to make a penis joke. Yeah. Nice. What Check out fuck? my Giant Size Man-Thing. Well, look at my Giant Size Man-Thing. Oh, that's as big as mine. I got my Giant Size Man-Thing signed. Nice. I got my Giant Size Man-Thing graded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That means That's you sealed it up sealed and it can never be taken out of the package. <laughs> I feel like we could break the seal. I don't know what that means. What does that know, mean? What, what does that mean? Giant Size X-Men number one is, of course, written by Len Wein with help by Dave Cockrum, who also illustrated the book. This is a book of many firsts, besides the fact that it is Giant Size X-Men number one. It is the debut of all the X-Men you like. Huh, now that really? thing's, I, I happen to like uh, nah. Vulcan. It introduces a whole bunch of characters, like all at once in one shot for seemingly like no reason at all. I like that I know most of these people. Of course you do. You've got a lot of firsts. This introduces a few characters for the first time ever. Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus, and of course, Thunderbird. Uh, which, yeah. which one is Thunderbird? You would be... The Native American. Oh. Who the hell is that? He didn't That's Sunfire. It. That's Sunfire? Yeah. He looks like a freaking wombat. <laughs> well, you'll see him a little close up, and he will still look like a wombat. He has the mutant power to fly and make fire. So who were the first X-Men? The original five X-Men were Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Iceman, Beast, and Angel. Oh, okay. That was the original five. I think it, that's Beast? It is Beast. Okay. Yes. Uh, of course, by this point, 1975, the X-Men have changed a little bit. Mm. Uh, they do show you the 05 and introduce you to this like splash page being like, look at these new characters. Uh, They're all crazy. Yeah, but a couple of those characters had flown the coop or graduated, so to speak. Beast, for example, left the team and joined the Avengers. Oh. So he hmm. was not on the team when this book came out. The book is, let's introduce you to a whole bunch of new X-Men. Out of nowhere, you're reading X-Men and then boom. Let's see some new X-Men here. And they're just, they're just dudes out in the world. Yep, and, and Professor X goes and he's like, I need you, come on. And they give really compelling, re there's, a, there's a trend throughout Giant Size X-Men where we meet a mutant who is gonna join the X-Men. Professor X implores them to join, gives very flimsy reasons for doing so. <laughs> they give very compelling reasons not to. <laughs> And then go with him. And they still do it anyway. Because, anyway. of course, he's the world's greatest telepath. He just makes them do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, I, we know now, of course, of that course. that's probably there, what he did. There are already a lot of retcons to Giant Size X-Men number one, but in the very beginning, in Giant Size X-Men number one, we don't have any indications that suggest that Professor X would do that. Mm -hmm. He absolutely does. I, I, have, I think there is actually more evidence to suggest that Pro Pro Professor Charles Xavier is a monster than a humanitarian who's out there just to save people. I gave him the mind whammy. Yeah. Made him come along. Constantly. I will tell you the big retcon to this story at the end. Okay. Which, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so we meet uh, Kurt Wagner, or Kurt Wagner, AKA Nightcrawler. He's being, he, he's, he's of course in Germany in the 70s. If you're in Europe in, and we're writing comics in America, I can only depict you as being torch-wielding lunatic. <laughs> well, you know? he looks like a demon. He looks awesome. Yes, he looks awesome. He looks like a demon. That's why yeah. they hate him. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's all that you need, really. They're uh, very religious, this Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Dave Cockrum is the reason why you like the X-Men, because he designed Nightcrawler's costume, Colossus's costume, Storm's costume. Like, he knew how to show you these mm. characters looking awesome. That being said, he was not infallible. There are a couple of designs that didn't work. He also redesigned Marvel Girl, not in this, but as a concept. And it just doesn't work, mm. like at all. And that's fair. Listen, you know, they're all hey, gonna be winners. Yeah, it's you not... introduced everyone, and they all work P to the point where people still draw them like that. Like, and like, okay, you didn't get Marvel Girl. To be fair, her first costume is nothing to write home Marvel about. Marvel Girl slash Jean Grey has never had a good costume, 
except for Phoenix. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. That's and, why they always want to put her in it. Yeah, and both <laughs> Phoenixes, by the way. Like, green and yellow or green and gold worked great. Red and gold, also awesome. So, like, both iterations of Phoenix, you worked. I'm so on board. Yep, she has to be a different person to have a good costume. That's right. She could also just keep the costume and be Jean Grey, but yeah. it wouldn't work. Yeah, they, they've done that too. But I also saw, uh, what was it? Of course, the 90s costume, which I hated the most, uh, with she has the head sock. And like this, this, this oh yeah, from the cartoon. Oh god, yeah, just yeah, the like, orange and blue. Yeah, it's just not great. Although if Jim Lee draws it, at least it's cool looking. It's just so impractical and doesn't say any. It doesn't convey anything. You know, Nightcrawler came from a circus, so he looks awesome because circuses are cool. No, because <laughs> because it's supposed to be elaborate and ornate. It's theatrical. Yeah. His costume's theatrical. He's part of a, of a, of a he's a showman, mm-hmm. if nothing else. So at least that makes sense. Uh, Although, it's funny because later, all the other characters will get costumes that Professor X just gives them. And he explains that they are made of unstable molecules given to him by Reed Richards. So basically, Professor X designs the costumes and gives them to them. But Nightcrawler, he comes with his own costume. <laughs> and I would hope that Professor X at least made him an unstable molecule version of mm. his original costume. Or nope. got Reed Richards to, to, to make one. Reverse engineer, yeah, yeah, one for him. So <laughs> Nightcrawler is besieged by angry townspeople. They attack him. He gets on the top of like a you know, cottage. Mm-hmm. And he thinks to himself, like, why are they hating me? Blah, blah, blah. It's every mutant you know, soliloquy you've ever heard. And then he's like, well, if I'm going to die, if they're going to get me... I'm, I'm gonna take as many with me as I can. He just jumps into the crowd. He just takes them all. He's just attacking them. I have had enough. Yeah, he That's reaches awesome. his breaking point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he's just overwhelmed. in their neck. He doesn't kill anybody, but he does like fight them. He just wants to punch them. Okay. Um, but we don't get that cool scene in the beginning of X2. We don't get X2, <laughs> which is one of the best intros to a comic book movie ever. Yeah. I just watched it the other day, and I was like, this still holds up. Yep. Looks good. So everyone's attacking him, and then everyone freezes, and Professor X rolls up. And he's mm. like, hello, I'm Charles Xavier. I want you to join my school for gifted youngsters. And he's like, sounds good. Because, of course, it beats being burned to death by angry townspeople. So this is where Professor X freezes people? Yes. I thought he didn't actually freeze he people. He doesn't normally that because that's the... weird. No, he, he just basically, it's, it's more that he just makes their minds, like, stop. Right. Like, they don't freeze like he's frozen time, like in the <laughs> movies. He just, they just stop attacking him. Right. And get out of his way. Oh, he actually like, makes them like Part. stand down. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That is cool. Now, is he actually there? Right. That's mm. the question. And I don't think he is. I think he's a mental projection to everyone because he doesn't have the time to fly to Germany <laughs> and Africa and Russia. Plus, I don't think he has the security clearance to cross over into Soviet Russia to collect one of his members. No, but presumably Plus, he could just mind whammy anyone that, you know... Yeah, he could probably break him. into anywhere. That's true. And in fact, he does pick them all up and take them where they need to go. So I guess the implication... Because they also have the the earliest version of the Blackbird, which is like a, like a vertical flying jet, and they all have to get into it. So, mm. yeah. We'll talk about code names in a little bit because some of these characters didn't start with code names. And mm. then they just get them. But what one about character was he? Uh, we don't even. Oh uh, yeah, no. Does Professor anyone X call him the Nightcrawler? Nope. They're like, oh, oh, I'm the Nightcrawler. I am the Nightcrawler. <laughs> no, uh, he's just there. He's just he's just Kurt Wagner. Okay. And in fact, uh, he begs Professor X, like, "Can you make me normal?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> what do you no, think that's I do? Not how it works. Yeah, no. He he just says like, "I can help normal. you." Normal. You are normal. He doesn't do that. He doesn't lie to him. <laughs> <laughs> He does say... You're not normal, can, you're the future. I can help you achieve... like I, I can help you become a whole person. Hmm. I can help you find what you're looking for, what you need, versus what you want. Right, right. And he's like, I'm in. That sounds cool. So he goes with them. Then, Professor X goes to Quebec, where he meets with the Canadian government to hmm. co-opt their secret agent, Wolverine. And they just let him go? No. <laughs> uh, they call Wolverine in... To a meeting, which I guess Professor X convinced them to hold. And he's like, hey, I'm Professor X. You have a mutant power, or three, and I would like for you to join my X-Men. And Wolverine goes, sweet. Sounds like there's a lot less red tape involved working for a covert group of, you know, clandestine superheroes than having to deal with the Canadian government, so I'm in. And his superior's like, um... (laughs) 
you can't go. And Wolverine is like, well, and he just pops his claws. This is, is going to be a trend for the oh, rest of man. his career. Pops his claws and goes, I think I've got all the reason I need right here. And, you know, he doesn't say that specifically, but he right. says that pretty specifically. Are you threatening, threatening to murder me? Yeah, that's You're right. under arrest. I'm not <laughs> threatening to murder you. I'm just saying your alternatives don't look very promising. Well, I'm like, just predicting the future, bub. Yeah, I can't. Well, you can't kill me. And I have claws that will cut me out of any prison, so... Right, good so luck. what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Plus, He's, like, I have a do? lot of secrets. He doesn't do that right. whole two claws pop up on the other side. He's like, sometimes the claws slip. He does that he later. the third one. He actually does do that. And he cuts his tie. He's like, I'll kill you with these if you don't let me go. You know, basically. Because he doesn't even ask him for permission. He's like, right. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Well, and, I'm done. Well, goodbye. And so he leaves and he goes, this isn't the end, Wolverine! And indeed it isn't because... Of course not. Actually, he sends, like members of the department to go get him. Please tell me it's Alpha Flight. It is Alpha Flight. Cool. The second time. Mm. But yes, he sends Alpha Flight to collect Wolverine. And by the way, I love it because it's like, it's not like he quit. Let's kill him or let's arrest him. No, it's, bring him back. No, bring him back and then convince him to keep working for us. <laughs> like literally Alpha Flight shows up and they're like, come on back to the team, Wolverine. You'll like it later. Have like, you thought of a phone call? <laughs> Well, I mean, they were in person, it didn't work. Yeah. Also, at that time, like, long distance? My god. Yeah. They, they, they had already introduced uh, Sean Cassidy, a.k.a. Banshee, earlier in the series. Mm. So Professor X just goes and he's like, hey, you, you want to join the X-Men? And Banshee's like, yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so then, that's it. We get two panels of getting Banshee on the team. And then we like, go... Oh, you know who Banshee is. Right, you got it. Is he already in America, or is he over in Ireland? Uh, he's in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> so, All then, right, Banshee. <laughs> then we go to Kenya, where Storm is worshipped like unto a god. Mm -hmm. Literally, Storm has her own, like, t altar, and she just lives in the plains. She has no top and a loincloth. She was actually, like, a street urchin and, like, a thief. Mm -hmm. And eventually, she found out she had freaking weather powers, and she's like, oh, I'm a god. And just went and just is is worshipped right just flies around and people bring her offerings you know they're like we'll sacrifice goats and shit to you if you just make it rain she goes you need the goats more than i do i got this flies up into the sky her eyes darken and rain falls from the sky and plentiful bounty and everyone worships her and she's like fuck yes <laughs> This is okay. awesome and then, professor x needs a really sweet fucking deal he does to... not uh but Ironically, Professor X brings the rain by raining on her parade and telling her, you're not a god, you freaking jackass. You are a mutant. There is like thousands of people like you who have equally interesting powers. I implore you to join the X-Men. Stop being so selfish, except like she's not because she's like she's literally helping, helping people. people. But, yeah. she's but still, she is also she is... reveling in the adoration. <laughs> of... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a give and take. Yeah. I don't need your coats. I just need your undying love. Yes, I need your prayers. <laughs> but she's like, I'm a god. And Professor X's like, no, you are not. You are a person. Come on, join the X-Men. No, she's I'm like, I'm a god. <laughs> I See? can make you do anything I want. Is that not a god? I can make you make it rain, which is basically me making it rain. Yep. So she's like, you make a convincing argument, I'm in. Like, she's just like, okay, I need to be in the book, so I'm in. Professor X goes to Japan and he tries to enlist Shiro Yoshida, aka Sunfire, who had already been introduced. He's like, join the X-Men. And he's like, that sounds totally lame. That's where I remember this guy. In uh, the Apocalypse book. Oh, uh, Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. Yes, he, every, every X-Man is in Age of Apocalypse. Yeah. Although, of course, because your X-Men introduction is Age of Apocalypse, you know them all wrong. Like, you <laughs> no. remember them all incorrectly. Like, hey, that the it's names like are right. It's the Ultimates. Yeah, right. Oh, no, because even then, they're a one-to-one. -one. Age of Apocalypse says, what if this, but that? You know the names and the powers, maybe, and then a different costume and a different reality. I just love, hey, Sunfire. And it's true, because they don't usually use Sunfire. So it was, like, kind of fun in Age of Apocalypse for them to be like, Sunfire? His costume was dope. It was dope. And, like, I think he got his powers because, like, his town was nuked. Mm-hmm. Oh. That happens a lot. Mm. What does he do? What are his powers? He flies and he can make fire. Yep. Oh. That's it. So he's kind of like Human Torch? Yeah, only he remains a guy when he's flying and making fire. Oh. It's more like Flying Pyro. <laughs> but, by okay. the way, uh, cool. And, also... If you haven't been paying attention, a guy from West Germany, a guy from Japan, and a lady from Kenya? Africa, and a dude from Ireland. No American X-Men so far. Right. And a Canadian. And a Canadian. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's as close as we get. 
This guy. Oh, okay. Sunfire. Yeah. He gets two panels as well. Nah. So then uh, Professor X goes to Russia where uh, Peter Rasputin is like tilling the fields and working for his family. His sister is almost hit by a tractor. He rescues her by powering up and destroying the tractor. Mm. And then he like laments having done it because he's like, my family will not be able to afford another tractor. Uh, but uh, then Professor X shows up and he's like, hey man, come to America and join my team. And he's like, I don't want to leave my family. We just lost our tractor. <laughs> this is a really hard time for us. And his I have to like, become the tractor yeah. now. His family's like, go, it'll be great. And he's like, okay. So he leaves. Yeah, they're like, well, good. good, he's going to America. He'll send us money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. We get, a, we get a tearful goodbye, like, you were supposed, supposed to thing. actually go. I, I, was I told you. To, <laughs> you were supposed to say, like, no, no, I can't. I have to stay. Yeah. No, 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 son. We will survive without you. Okie dokie. Do svidania. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so he they called her bluff. I, yeah. I, I thought you would argue a little more. Yeah. <laughs> so he leaves. And then Professor S goes to Arizona, where John Proudstar is... Just being a badass. Oh, here we go. The only American on the team. That's right. <laughs> the only real American on this <laughs> team. Uh, yeah, John Proudstar is just running the planes. His powers are just, he's strong and he has high endurance. Okay. In Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, he also like can turn into animals that you find on totem poles and stuff. If it's on a totem pole, I can turn into like, it. Like Western. Yeah, animals. like I call upon the spirit of the great grizzly to break this door. And he's just wrestling a bison to the ground. And Professor X is like, that make you feel good? Wrestling bison? He's like, one time there was this period when there were lots of bison. And my family didn't have to like live on reservations and drink themselves to death. Uh, they, the people who made that happen look a lot like you. And Professor X is like, yeah, anyway, hey, you want to join my team? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. Anyway, uh, anyway I'm thinking I got a mansion back in- Done! <laughs> Literally, Proudstar is like, I have no interest in doing that. That sounds totally lame. I'm in. <laughs> this one, there is no way- the, if, if Professor X uses his mind powers on anyone in this book, it is absolutely John Proudstar. Right, he two, shows no interest. In two separate inter instances in which he is like, he vocally speaks out against doing this. And it's hilarious because there's another character who's also, Sunfire's like, I don't know if I want to do that. All right, I'm in. And then like, mm -hmm. and then they go on their mission. He's like, fuck this, and just leaves. Okay. Nah, I don't want to actually do this. And then he shows back up, he's like, nah, I changed my mind. <laughs> you're like, Get the fuck out of here. We already have too many people. Get Why out. is that in the book? I don't Why know. Why would they write that? Why would they do that? I guess to well, show sometimes you. Sometimes people change their minds and then they change them back. That's realism for you. It's just, it's tumultuous. <laughs> it's inexplicable, so therefore it's realistic. Yeah, and maybe it makes their bond strong because they're like, they left and they thought it would be better. But then they were just like, no, I'm nothing without this team. I have to go back. I, no one says you know, that. Sometimes, sometimes when you're a kid, you feel like quitting and then yeah. you like you do, but you can unquit. Right. That's a good lesson to teach people. I guess. Unquitting. I mean, not really. But hey, like, I unquit. Not. No, no, you quit, you're out. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, maybe next year. So we, we, we meet the team, and they're all, like, hanging out and wearing their cool costumes. They, yeah. they remark on how crazy these clothes are. Professor X mentions the Fantastic Four. Maybe we'll team up with them someday. And Fox cries a little bit. And then <laughs> Sunfire's like, this sucks. I hate this. You guys are super lame. Yeah, this is lame. And then Professor Not as lame as your butterfly mask. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of my ancestral butterfly mask. So Professor X is like, maybe I should explain exactly why we're doing this in the first place. Uh, yeah, you probably should. Because there's already like five other members of the X-Men and none of them are here. And so Professor X is like, I'll let Cyclops explain that to you. And you're like, oh, Cyclops, right. Wait, well, there's five? Oh yeah, the leader of the X-Men. No, no, the original five. Yeah, there's five X-Men. And how many of these are there? Seven. So now there's 12? Yeah. And Professor X 13, was going around calling people members. to join his little mm -hmm. group and they had no reason to, but they dropped what they were doing and signed up. Yeah. You're going to be the A team, you're going to be the B team. He, that's what happens like 25 years later in X-Men number one, where they're like, no, it's, it's gold and blue. Yeah. Mm. Oh. When you were reading X-Men, the team was Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Iceman, Angel, Polaris, and Havoc. So they were saying, hey, maybe we want to bring these guys in. Will that sell books? Well, no. They will, well, yes. I mean, obviously, every decision that any publisher makes is because of sales. But, like, you'll see why in just a second. Cyclops shows up and he's like, okay, so here's the deal. All the other X-Men may be dead. And you're enlisted to replace slash rescue them. <laughs> rescue if possible. Replace, replace if, if necessary. necessary. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Uh, what? Hey, you recruited me. What are we doing? <laughs> we're going to rescue possibly the dead people who were the first team. Yes. Who were you? I'm out. What you are now, mm -hmm. but before you. Yeah. No. <laughs> we find a little black box. The professor was right. We weren't as good as his last team. <laughs> well, then we get wait, a... What's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen to us if we get captured? I'll find another group of mutants. Maybe they'll rescue That's you. That's what I do. So then we get a flashback, and basically <laughs> Professor X gets a ping on Cerebro that, like, the most powerful mutant they've ever found. Oh, boy. He's on an island in the South Pacific, and so he scrambles the team. Go find them and bring them here, and I'll use my mind powers to make them work for me. Oh. So the whole team scrambles, and they get into the Stratojet, which I can only assume actually goes into the stratosphere and then goes, like, back down yeah. so that it can get places in short amounts of time. But they also talk about how it has a VTOL jet, which is yep. a vertical takeoff and landing. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Where? How does that work? It just comes oh, out the bottom. it just comes out the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And as they're going, I remember like, what was it? Marvel Girl says something like, boy, it's too bad Beast isn't here. And Cyclops is like, fuck Beast! So Wait, is this before this he is became the blue and furry or after? Flashback. Yeah, he's already blue and a fur. Okay. Fur what was monster. he before that? Just a dude with big feet. Yeah, he oh. looked like just a giant guy. Yeah, He no, looked like the kingpin. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, Beast's original powers was he was dexterous and strong. And his feet weren't like they are in X-Men First Class where they're like, they look like hands right and he's so horrified by his appearance he has to make himself blue but he is in the comics as well he's like man my feet are so big i need to get rid of my mutation so he experiments on himself and like fate is like fuck you and makes him blue and furry and right stuff. don't you, try to change who you are or whatever you could have infiltrated society right and now you have to wear your mutation Yep. You gotta brush your mutation. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta condition your mutation. <laughs> your mutation is gonna kill three vacuums a year. Exactly. <laughs> they arrive, they land, they get out, and then Cyclops wakes up and his uniform's torn, his powers aren't working, and the sh and the the plane is going in the opposite direction. He's like, oh like shit! Like he sees it like taking no, off. No, he's in the plane. Oh, he's in it. And oh. he's just like, duh! And he's like, wait a minute, my visor's gone and my powers aren't working. What's going on here? So and he and he. It says he spends like five minutes just pounding on the control panel and then just gives up and lets it take him back to Westchester. I just love the visual of him going like no! this for five minutes. Five minutes. That's, that's a long, long time. time to pound on to a control try the panel. same thing that's not working. I know. But yeah. No, he, I, 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 I'm like the Fonz. I got to hit it the right way. Yeah. I just got to find that spot. Yeah. That, that's, that's the only way to start the Blackbird. So, or the, the, the... Or Biff's car. Yeah. So it's, what is it, on autopilot and he yeah. can't change it? That's right. The okay. Stratojet. The Stratojet, thank yeah. you. Stratojet. So he arrives, like, Professor, I'm back! And everyone's dead, I guess. I don't know, I don't remember anything. Or something. And Professor is like, what? And then... What's wrong with your eyes? Yeah, and then Cyclops' eyes start to work. He's like, oh no, they're working! And Professor's like, put on your goddamn glasses! And he's like, I don't have them! My glasses! <laughs> and then they blast, and they're even more powerful than they were before. Oh no. So he's got to put the visor back on. So then they're all like, okie dokie, that's... A cool story, but what does that have to do That's with any cool of us? Cool story, bro. So Sunfire is like, that sounds lame. I'm out. Uh, I'm not going to I'm that. Not going to that me? island? I'm not going to your crazy ass island. Yeah. Screw that. That sounds I like I was... where your team goes to die. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was selected to be part of a team, right? Not a rescue party. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Oh, you don't know what like, happened or where they like, are. What is the plan? Oh, no. Just go there and hope that doesn't That's happen. That's it. He's like, he literally is like, I don't even know them. Why would I risk my life for them? And Cyclops says, I feel sorry for you, but I have no time to argue. And then they scramble into the jet, the same jet they took the last time. Yep. And on their way over there, Sunfire is like, hey, open the door, I changed my mind. And they're like, okay. What made you change your mind? Nothing. Nothing. Gee whiz, if I had to guess, I could think of a powerful telepath that could change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, <laughs> Every... I can think of a powerful telepath that could probably solve this problem. Jesus, it's like every time that Sunfire gets control of his will, he just doesn't want to do it. Yeah. It's like, I have to keep oh, controlling God. him. It's not, it's, you're really starting to piss me off, Sunfire. I have to keep just going into your mind and, and subverting your will. That's it's right. kind of exhausting. Yeah. I don't think you understand. Did I've got other things ball? to do. Come on. This and, is eating uh, into my time. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclops gives the orders and he pairs everybody up. Everybody's got to take one wing of the island to go searching for the X-Men. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter who he pairs everybody up with, so I'm not going to bother. But, like, the, the, the takeaway from any of this interaction is that uh, Cyclops refers to John Proudstar as Thunderbird. And Proudstar is like, my name is John Proudstar. 
And Cyclops is like, yeah, but Professor X calls you Thunderbird, so we're going to go by Thunderbird from now on. And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> can't even pick his own he can't freaking even pick call, his sign. call sign. <laughs> <laughs> the white man's got to give him a call sign! Your name is Thunderbird now! What about, what was wrong with Proudstar? What's wrong with Proudstar indeed? I like that Thunderbird is essentially just like, it's just a name. It's, it's just, a cool car. Yeah. Right. No, you're named after a dope car. And uh, you're Nightcrawler. Nightcrawlers are worms. <laughs> Do I look like worms? What of this? You have a tail, I guess. You just make these up off the top of your head. So, yeah, because you crawl around, right? You're called Cyclops. You clearly have two eyes. <laughs> No, but like with the visor, it's kind of like it's kind of like one eye. Yeah, yeah, I no. can focus them into one beam. But there are two eyes, though. <laughs> there are two eyes. Yeah, no, <laughs> there are there are two eyes. Yeah, I'm just saying, it just seems very haphazard. Look, this is why I make the names, and, <laughs> and you do you're the mission. Nightcrawler. <laughs> I'm thinking you're Nightcrawler. <laughs> <laughs> so they get on the they they land. They're immediately attacked by vines. Uh, a couple of people. But end their up... powers work. It's not like the island saps their powers. No, no, no. So okay. Not the Savage Lands. No, okay. and in fact, the Savage Land doesn't really do that. But oh. like, it's just in the cartoon. Oh. But like, Bendis also thought that's what it does, or maybe that was just a, a power that Sauron used on them. Oh, but... like one time he was there and he did that. And yeah. So now. Yeah. So now people think that. Yeah. Okay. But no, this, this is a different island. The team, of course, like each pair encounters a host of obstacles yeah. which they team up to defeat. With their powers combined. Precisely. Yeah. Like Colossus and Storm are together. They're attacked by falling rocks. Oh and, no. Uh, they're they're attacked attacked by like, falling rocks. Yeah. Literally. Sentient that, rocks? Uh, they're not sentient, but like the thing that knocked the rocks down is sentient. So okay. like, you know, Colossus armors up. He's protected from rocks. Storm uses wind Does powers. Does he like cover pushes, her? No, well, no. he... She looks like she can take care of herself. He lets her run ahead of him while he takes the brunt of it, and ah. then the rocks keep coming, and she uses wind to push them away. Ah. Okay. And he says, like, hang on, I'll pick up this tree and hit the rocks. She's like, I already pushed them with my wind powers. You know, I was a god. <laughs> she doesn't say that, but, like, right. literally three pages ago she was. In, In Russia, we have no gods. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we can, Only yeah. men. So Banshee and Wolverine are attacked by giant crabs. So they it's have like, lunch. Why? <laughs> Draw the butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wolverine cuts them. Banshee blasts them with his yelling powers. Right. Which also allow him to fly. I mean, yeah, Sonic's against a hard shell like that. That kind of works. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do their shell explode into a million pieces? Do their brains yes. vibrate and That's boom awesome. right out their skulls? It's only two pages, man. I don't know. Like, they, you know it's, <laughs> they defeat them. They beat the crabs. And they don't, like, take prisoners. So, uh, Nightcrawler and Sunfire team up, and they're just attacked by birds, and Sunfire's just like, well, I'll burn the birds out of the sky! <laughs> Nightcrawler's like, why? Oh, birds! God. No, Nightcrawler, this is the first time we actually see his teleportation powers. A, a big bird's gonna get him with his big talons, so Nightcrawler just bamps out of the way. Nice. Uh, incidentally, this is not the first appearance of Bamf. I was gonna say, does it, does it Bamf? Or it does, does not, not Bamf. Bamf? We just see the, the cloud. Huh. So he gets out of the way. It's confusing, I don't know what happened. You gotta put a thing in there. Yeah. So he gets out of the way and the bird just hits a tree. <laughs> womp womp. So they go to the temple, they enter the, like, the first like foyer, and then there's like a big wall of concrete. So, so everyone... they all started in like the corners and worked their way to the center? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, actually no, they started at one point, they all went out to the corners and then found their way back into the center. <laughs> yeah, okay. So they, uh, they, they, they use their powers combined to blast through the concrete where they find all the original X-Men are strung up amongst these like tubes and vines and there's like these suckers on their bodies and their energy is being drained oh and uh you think they're dead but they're not and uh so they just they just free the x-men they're just like okay grab them get ready grab a person and they just pull them right. out of the just vines rip them off those and they, they bring them out and everyone kind of like is still out of it but yeah. angel comes to first he's like, why did you come here man Cyclops is like, what are you talking about dude jesus christ they talk about gratitude it came to save you and he's like no it wanted you to bring you back and find oh. more people. That's why you don't remember. That's like, why it let you leave. Live. Yeah. Don't you get it? You fool! You fool! The mutant is the island, and the island like erupts into this big horrible monster. Uh huh. Called Krakoa. Yeah. What? Okay. This is the beginning and the first appearance of Krakoa, the island that walks like a man. <laughs> That's All right. what they call it. Yes. <laughs> What's ironic, of course, is that oh. Krakoa pulls together enough of himself to be the island that walks like a man. Like, the temple itself just collapses into 
ground and then becomes Krakoa, but they're still on an island. Yeah. The yeah. island... the island and also can make an avatar of himself on the island. Yeah. This is oh, me, you I have see. to defeat me. Yeah. So, like, this is this is me, but I, I'm also the ground that you're still on. Right. This is and, just a piece of me. Right, and I'm not just going to, like, bring out the ground from beneath you, because he wants to keep them alive, because he wants right. to draw from their mutant powers to sustain himself. In fact, what happened is, okay. uh, according to Krakoa's origin that he imparts to them, uh, basically, in the South Pacific, they were testing atom bombs, and the nuclear fallout fused all the living creatures and life that were on this island into one sentient being. Oh, so he's different from every other mutant in that he didn't start out as a human. That's right. Mm. And I, I was, I've been waiting... Are there, are there like mutant birds and right? like mutant dogs? So he's in a radiated island. Yes. Is it dangerous for them to be on that island because nah. of the radiation? No, you're good. No, it, <laughs> that was early. The radiation went away. It, all that's left is the horrible monster. Yes. Maybe he absorbed, maybe, okay, here's... Like Godzilla. Here's your no prize. Uh, he absorbed the radiation and used it to fuel his own energy, and now he's run low, and so he pulls energy from these mutants. In any case, here he is. Behold well, Krakoa. I think we found sure. the uh, the answer for all this toxic waste issues we've been having. Yeah. Just dump it on Krakoa. Yeah, right? Yeah. Nope. Nope. Well, Krakoa doesn't make it out of this book. Oh, uh, well, of course oh. he does, because he's well, the yeah. linchpin of say. the current Hickman era of X-Men, though there have been multiple Krakoas after this Krakoa. Uh, so it's hard to really describe what the hell's going on with the current Hickman era, because it's still happening. And like, I don't think Hickman's going to bother to explain what the link is between this awesome looking monster, yeah. this He-Man villain, versus the Krakoa that is allowing them to live on it right. in the current volume that of X-Men. doesn't manifest as like a monster no. walking around. But they do retcon that as well in like 06. Oh. So hmm. uh, basically the island took the X-Men, let Cyclops leave, and then shoved him on the plane and sent him out. I mean... If it's the island itself that's attacking them and they're standing on it, it feels like just do a little cave in. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, like, just... yeah, I guess he wants to he wants to gloat because he's he, he's like, aha, I'm Krakoa. Oh, it talks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It shouldn't be the island that walks like a man. It should be the island that talks like a man. Oh. But don't worry, there's a retcon for that too. So the X Men uh, just listen to Krakoa talk to them while he explains the rest of the shit. Right. Uh, and then he attacks them. What is it like? I've been. He gives his backstory. Yeah, he, like, he explains was, like uh, how he was born, and then explains how he fed upon the X Men, like, how he I, let Cyclops get away. Look, I need to eat you. Yes, and and now that you're here, I will be hungry no longer. And then Mother Krakoa comes. Krakoa, stop playing with your food, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> and then Professor X shows up. And he's like, "Stop! That's just what he wants." What? I've been monitoring your battle the whole time with my mental powers. And you're so, fucking it all yeah. up. So I, but now that you've attacked him, we gotta like formulate a plan. And so basically he's like, I've got it. I will attack Krakoa's mind? No, oh, you're gonna have a mind, a battle on the mindscape? No. <laughs> no, it's more like I will attack his mind and while his mind is occupied, you will attack him as well. And so Storm and Polaris team up. You and know what they it use is? their abilities to beat Krakoa. This okay. is the one person that turned down Professor X, and he's like, How dare Go you? attack Krakoa! <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't listen to my mind, mind whammy. Yeah, what a Son dick. Of a bitch. Ironically, of course, Krakoa will become the X-Men's bitch, like, for years to come. Uh, but not before a fun uh, deviation, as we will get to in a little bit. Okay. So, uh, Polaris, of course, has control over magnetic fields, because she is the daughter of Magneto. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she and Storm... Uh, team up where Storm like ge generates lightning and she fires it at Polaris and Polaris uses the lightning to control the magnetic field of the like ground or whatever. It was 1975 <laughs> and comic artists don't know how magnets work and a lot happens in like only two pages that explains how they defeat Krakoa and it has the it uses magnets a lot. So while while Polaris and Storm are working on their plan, which involves driving magnetic fields through the very core of the Earth. Uh, the X-Men bail on the, on, on the island, jump into the water, Iceman makes a flotation device out of his ice powers, and they wait on that while Polaris and Storm, combining their powers, basically create like a weird suction effect where like they pull the energy out from beneath Krakoa and then Fire it back up? Like, so the whole island is just basically, like, knocked out of the Earth's atmosphere and fired into space. 
Okay. Yeah. No, that wouldn't. That wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, they're not affecting gravity. Yeah, gravity <laughs> and uh, and magnetism are two different right. forces that aren't connected to each other. But they are in this, and so they fire the the <laughs> island out of the Earth's atmosphere and just goes off into space. Cool. So Fun. Krakoa's dead. It should be, except why? It doesn't need to breathe. Well, it's got plants on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's all a living thing. <laughs> well, don't worry because it doesn't die. Oh. But the 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 effect of removing the island from its spot causes like a like a kind of whirlpool typhoon situation, and so the X Men have to free yeah, themselves. Yeah, that makes sense because you just displaced a whole bunch of mass exactly. that was in the water. Yeah, and, and you drilled a hole to the Earth's core. Back in. Yeah. Yeah. Did they know they could do that? Shoot they, an island up into the They act space? like they do because they do it in a coordinated move that requires no dialogue. And also, like, <laughs> Storm, a right. new character, teams up with Polaris, a, a character, character she's never met before! Who's already on the team. Right. Yeah. Who don't know each other's powers. Nope! Uh, maybe they talked about it on the jet on the way over. Yeah. Hey, just in case we need to, like, destroy this island. Right. Well, I have magnet powers. I will say... Professor oh, X, that's fantastic! I have lightning powers. You oh, know those, those go hand in hand. There we go. Professor X literally dumps the English language into everyone's heads when they first arrive in Westchester, so that they can all talk to. So each they can all talk to each other <laughs> and you, speak English. You guys could talk to each other now. <laughs> so I would assume Hail. he also dumped all of their yeah, like their stats knowledge about their stats. <laughs> yeah, into each other's heads. And so Storm's like, ah, Polaris, a level six mutant with the ability to control magnetic fields. Perfect. Okay. So, Iceman. Do they ever do this again? They you know, I've never the seen them space? do that again. Okay. <laughs> Probably because they can only really pull it off once before readers go, oh, bullshit. Yeah. But Iceman creates a bubble around them of ice, so they are able to survive. Mm. Uh, then they break free of the bubble, and then they're like, oh, right, the Stratajet is waterproof. So then they get in the Stratajet. Oh, it's just sitting there? It, like, it like, oh, it's resurfaces. Floating. Oh. And, cool. Uh, and so they all get on it, and Angel's like, that was pretty cool. But Ooh. here's my question. What are we going to do with 13 X-Men? And don't worry, because most of them quit. Right. So we don't have 13 X-Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, they allude to, like, a, a, a subplot that, like, no one cares about, that they never use again, where uh, Iceman wants to sleep with Polaris, and Havoc wants to... Like, there's a love mm. triangle between Iceman and Polaris and uh, Havoc. Havoc. All right. Which, like, no one cared about and they didn't really address. But again, if you watch the X-Men cartoon show, that's like the linchpin of the one episode Iceman is in. It's like, mm. what do I know about Iceman? He wants to sleep with Lorna Dane! Like, what? That's where your head went? In any case, it's alluded to in this. Also, we refer to, of course, Havoc and Cyclops being brothers. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Does, they, uh, does Wolverine make a, make a pass at Marvel Girl? No. Damn. No, he doesn't go like, hey, I'll, I'll take the redhead. <laughs> I'm oh, always no. a thing for redheads. No, no, no reference whatsoever. We'll Where get that, that later. Where does that come from? It comes from this, but like oh, not this. Not this it way. comes from hating Cyclops. Right. Screw that guy. No, Proudstar has more of an issue with Cyclops than Wolverine in this book, which poses a problem. Which is why in X Men number ninety four, uh, they kill Thunderbird. A mere three issues later, Ooh. they're like, okay, that's enough gruff loners who have a problem with Professor X and authority. So. Well, this was really tryouts and uh, Wolverine won. Yes. So. Yeah, the, the, the tryouts of popularity. Yep. Because, like, literally, Thunderbird just, he blows up in a plane. Oh. Trying to stop Count Nefaria from Shit. getting away. Count Nefaria does get away. Oh. He has no reason to attack the plane. And he dies and never is resurrected. Wow. 19, 1975 to now. That's never kinda, been resurrected. Kind of dark. Yeesh. Yeah. Hey, let's kill the Native American. Hey, let's enlist the Native American against his will. Change his name that he doesn't like. Uh, Proudstar's a great code name. Why would not you just call him that? I know. So, anyway, that's, that's the story of how these X-Men joined the team and started everything. Wolverine, right. they didn't know. They knew he was a pretty popular character from him being a Hulk villain, but... <laughs> They weren't sure just how popular he could get. Oh, so and he had appeared before. He, he, yes, his first appearance was actually in a Hulk book. He, fight, he fought Hulk for two issues. Was so he a mutant? They didn't say. Okay. In this, when they have the meeting, Professor X is like, oh, by the way, you're a mutant. I, I don't know if you knew. Right. But you're a mutant. And also augmented by technology, but, but first a mutant. 
No. Well, yes, the, the, <laughs> the Adamantium. The, the Adamantium. Yeah. Well, they didn't they didn't know anything about Wolverine when they created him. Mm. And there were all these retcons they wanted <laughs> to do. Uh, they, they Was that so there were someone's like, wait a minute, he, his mutant powers that claws come out of his skin, so mutant powers can put metal in your oh, body. Oh no, they now? didn't even bother with that. No, they, the, his mutant powers are his ability to like track and heal and stuff. They were going to say that the that the claws were mechanical. Yeah, part of the like, suit. He, oh. Yeah, his gloves had the claws oh, pop out. Oh, okay. And then Peter David wanted to have him actually be a, a Wolverine. Like he started as a Wolverine, but his mutation was that he became a man. <laughs> and everyone was like, "Fucking, what are you doing, what? man?" <laughs> no, he was like, "Well, well Krakoa's just yeah, a, with Krakoa, Krakoa's we established that birds and other crap. animals could be mutants. That became sentient. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but." Wolverine being an actual Wolverine is a bridge too far. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to pull the adamantium skeleton right out of his fucking body. How do you like that? Oh, now, God. The is there any rule that says I can't do that? Yeah. No? Anyone? Anyone? Actually, everyone loved that. They were like, that's brilliant. Uh, Damn it! A big retcon for this <laughs> is that the team that everyone likes, that Professor X enlisted to save the X-Men, mm -hmm. was the second new team. And that Professor X enlisted a previous X-Men. Okay. <laughs> That oh. all died. Didn't this come up in a book we did? It may have come up. Uh, this was in a book called Deadly Genesis, which we did not do on this couch. But in the, the, the big reveal of Deadly Genesis is there is this like spacefaring douchebag named Vulcan, and he is also the third Summers brother. So he is like Alex what? and Scott's brother, uh, and he was born in space and then came back. And Professor X he's knew a space it. Space brother. Yeah, he's a space brother. He's a space dad. Had him. Right. Uh, but in space. In space, yes. Okay. Well, actually, uh, Corsair and his wife were captured by the Shi'ar, and then uh, they killed the wife, and then took the baby out and, like, incubated it, and they were going to turn him into, like, a weapon. They were, yeah. you know, like they, like they do. And, Corsair's uh, seed is too strong. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but they were just like, well, pff, this well, is just part what, of our program. Look what came from Havoc and Cyclops. That's true. Well, they didn't know about that. The, you know, but uh, but they they advanced his age so that he would be the same age as Scott and Alex when he came back. Right. Okay. Uh, so he came back. Professor X is like, "Hey, you're Scott's brother. Why don't you join my X Men and go help him out?" So like, literally, how would you like to save him? Yeah. I want to kill that son of a bitch. No, no, so oh, brothers fight. No, no, no. Cyclops was here already. No, no. It's more like, "Hey, let's get your brother," and then Cyclops and Vulcan and a bunch of other X Men who you never see, uh, join up, and then they go to Rikokoa. They all die, and, uh, and, and then Cyclops uh, comes back, and he's inconsolable. And Professor X is like, you don't remember you had a brother. And nobody remembers that there was another X-Men team. Because that's very con inconvenient. And then he enlists the new X-Men. Right. So I that's the mind whammy. Yes. I think that came up in uh, Hawks and Pox. I'm sure I it think did. that's where I know it from. Well, probably because Vulcan shows up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And Vulcan, of course, his body was on Krakoa when it was fired into space. Mm. But the collector collected Krakoa, stuck him on a shelf, and Vulcan, like, you know, he regenerated because he and the other mutants you didn't see, Darwin... They were next to each other, and Darwin's powers in his near-death state kept, like, because of his pro his proximity to Vulcan, Vulcan alive, and essentially Darwin evolved to be part of Vulcan's body, so the two of them could survive together. <laughs> and then in Deadly Genesis, it's very weird. Vulcan shows up, and he's the antagonist of the story, and basically they pull Darwin out of Vulcan, and then Vulcan fucks off, and Darwin joins the X-Men. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, cool. But that's what happens to Krakoa. Krakoa becomes like a, 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 you know, a collectible on his shelf. <laughs> right, right. So and Darwin just evolves things. Himself. And things. Depends. What is he pointing at? So, and we saw Darwin in another X-Men book we did. Mm. I believe it was uh, No More Humans. Sounds familiar. Yeah. So, Krakoa has come up a couple of times. Yeah. They also, like, use... Either an element of Krakoa or one of Krakoa's offspring in the Danger Grotto in Generation X. Mm. Uh, oh, that's where that comes from. Yeah, because it's like an evolving, changing, like yeah. physical place. Uh, of course, so they enslave Danger. 
Yeah. They oh, yeah. T they t enslave a child of Krakoa. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Son of Krakoa. Yeah. yeah. Danger room has a certain connotation to it. Yes. When you say danger grotto, yeah. it's, my brain goes to danger bungalow. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's like more. You, you you train on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. And you do smaller scale training. Yeah, and, and it's like, all outdoor, nature-based training. <laughs> and there's a daiquiri at the end. Oh, that sounds good. Mm. If you had mind control powers, wouldn't you use them to control people? Yeah, listen. Like, he's, didn't think about, like, the horror of that. Right, and, and also he's not doing it to, like, take over the world or yeah, anything, he's doing so he's a good, good guy. Yeah, he's doing it for a good purpose. Yeah, he's, he's, look, he's, he's trying to save to his team that he put into mortal danger yeah. by compelling other people to risk their lives to help him. What a humanitarian. And of course, like, right after this, Sunfire's like, I quit, I'm out of here, this is stupid. My costume sucks, I'm <laughs> I mean, he brought that costume himself. I don't know. And Professor X was having a nap, so he couldn't like get him back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, where's Sunfire? Uh, he Damn went it. back to Japan. Oh, oh. No, that's too far. He acted like he never joined the team, and he didn't know where he was, and he flew away. Oh uh, well, it's Sunfire, so you know, no big loss. Well, you're gonna lose a few. Yep. At least well, it was Sunfire. Right, and not Wolverine. And not Wolverine. Thank God I for you. I feel like Wolverine with his short range melee attack. <laughs> It's gonna come against our magnet-based supervillain. <laughs> but this also was, would, would establish a precedent in the X-Men books where they became basically superheroes. Because mm. they, they saved before. People? They were more like they, they defended themselves or they were fighting for mutant rights. But this is more like, okay, let's go! Let's like go bank robbers and shit. Let's go save our own people from Ourselves. the dangerous situation that we that put we got ourselves in. in. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, but we will do heroic stuff. Oh yeah, no, don't mark my words. There. This it's is a little bit great. closer. I'm saving people. Technically, I am saving people. Yes, it's our people <laughs> who weren't doing anything particularly altruistic. Okay, uh, true. When no, they were captured. But the, the <laughs> heroic part of this book is that they shot an island in a space that housed crabs the size of this couch. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's horrific. Other no. people would have would have had problems with that island. Oh yeah, eventually. So yeah, I'm actually shocked proactive. that people didn't like die on this island. Yeah. There you know, it, was, it, was a, it was a preemptive strike against What the if? Yeah. What if the island did have people living on it? <laughs> yeah. And they also got irradiated and became part of the island. That's why mm. it has a consciousness in those oh. language. Oh, no. The reason why it has a consciousness is because Professor X made them think it did. That's is that the, the retcon? Yes. That's the one you were going to reveal. Yeah, that's the other retcon, yeah. is that, like, Krakoa had why no would, sentience. Why would he do that? Yeah. Why would he talk? Well, though, why would Professor X make want oh. to make the X Men think that it was sentient? There, it's evil. He needed to give them the context, and he needed to give them a backstory to fight Krakoa that obfuscated the horrors of killing another entire X Men team. So he like makes Krakoa this like antagonist. It is an antagonist. It did try to like eat them and yeah, take over yeah, their yeah. powers, but, he but makes like, it like a person. Yeah, he made it a person, but it really wasn't. And he, there's the, the big reveal is like, where he's like, you know, you, he sh he's like, you remember it being this. And he's like, I am Krakoa, the island that walks like a man. And I, I, the, the time for talking is past. It's time to fight. And he's like, here's what it really said. And it just goes, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, did we need that? I mean, whatever. So we're all just standing there being like, oh, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yes. The whole team is like. And Krakoa's like, what the hell are they looking at? What are you gawking at, you colorful assholes? I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> My food normally doesn't do this to me. Right. They just he's like, <laughs> and they're like, uh-huh. Mm, good point. <laughs> Let's go, X-Men. Save it, Krakoa! <laughs> <laughs> no more philosophizing from you, Krakoa. It's time to be shot into space. <laughs> Professor X is like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> It's like there's like an agenda at Marvel where they're like, oh, don't forget, if you have an opportunity, make Professor X a complete asshole. Like, well, it's just like, how dare you call him like the Martin Luther well, King of the freaking Marvel Universe? I mean, yeah, but in this current story, we wanted Krakoa to not be like a guy, so right. like we gotta make it not a guy. Why? Well, why would? But but we saw it talking. Yeah, he's talking. Oh, oh. Uh, well, uh, Professor, Professor X, X made that. made them think he was talking. Whenever you see something like that, uh, Professor X made them see it. Yes. Yeah, anytime any character acts answer. out of character in any X-Men book, blame Professor X. Yep. He is the culprit. Just because, like, well, he can. And, and so he did. I don't really want to think about well, another way to do it, so he, he did. He can. I'm tired. And there's a precedent. So. Yeah. And we've already made him a monster so right. many times. What am I going to do now? Like, uh, come on. Oh, uh, greater good. Yeah. Yep. Yep, Professor X is a monster. Canon. It's canon. It's can Oh, it's 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 cemented in canon. That's that's not even a retcon. Like in like X-Men in X in X-Men number one, when they debut, he is like, 
Mm, that Jean Grey is a hot piece. <laughs> what? Yeah, and you're like, um, you <laughs> gross man, you enlisted her in your school? <laughs> oh, I gave her a scholarship. <laughs> After this, by the way, they, they stop treating the, the, the Xavier Institute like a school. Oh, yeah. He keeps calling them his students, but, like, there ain't no classes. Uh, I was going to ask, like, how old are these people supposed <laughs> to be? He calls them youngsters and children, but, like, they... If They're they, drawn, like, fully grown adults. They are in their mid-twenties. There's no yeah. question. Yeah, okay. Maybe they're supposed to be, like, 22. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, you're... You're like graduate students. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Cyclops <laughs> look like he's 35. Oh, he's the oldest. He's in the original yeah. team. Yeah, he's and Wolverine's 20... 106. He's like Look a postdoc. Look at Banshee. Banshee's got to be 50. <laughs> he just has a bad haircut. Yeah, That's he just has problem. a terrible haircut. Anyway, Giant Size Eggman number one. What the hell? Uh, what the hell indeed? Start, but a lot of firsts. Krakoa, yeah. uh, Wolverine being on the team, Storm Colossus Nightcrawler. Uh, the power combo move with uh, Storm and Polaris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen first and last characters time. do that, but yes, first and last time we see Polaris and Storm probably We didn't see a fastball that. special, though. Not I'm yet. disappointed. No, but this is the first time that Wolverine and Colossus have been together. Mm -hmm. They didn't have an opportunity. They weren't paired up, so they didn't get exactly. the Exactly. Yeah, he was, was paired up with Storm. If they were, they wouldn't yeah. have done it. Yeah, he w Wolverine was paired up with Banshee. Banshee. Yeah. And in fact, at one point, they need to like cover a short distance, so Banshee has to carry Wolverine, and he's like, mm -hmm. do you have to do that? Like, so he's like, yeah! and makes him fly. Yeah. He's like, do you have to do that? I have super sensitive hearing <laughs> yeah. that is incredibly annoying. Yeah, exactly. Nope, this is how I fly. Thank God for the healing factor. Like, you burst my eardrums and they just grow right back. Anyway, <laughs> I'll put a link in the description for you to get something that collects Giant Size X-Men number one. I had to get this old-ass copy of the Marvel Masterworks collection, but uh, it, it, it's everywhere. I'm sure there's like a facsimile edition that you can get, or it's in some weirdo trade, but mm. I think it's worth reading. It's a lot of fun. Len Wein's stuff is good. There's a great moment where there's a big splash page the X-Men are fighting Krakoa. It's like the whole combined might of the X-Men. And it just says something like, I'm gonna shut up and let you look at this awesome page. <laughs> also, you got David Cockrum and his awesome designs. By the way, Nightcrawler and other characters in this, like Storm, were originally going to be characters in his run for Legion of Superheroes over at DC. And they were rejected. And he's like, mm, Nightcrawler's too profitable. I'm going to hang on to that. Use that someplace else. And then yeah. he sticks him on the X-Men. One to one. Yeah. Just in the just 30th the century, guy. there was a blue guy who had this great costume. And he's like, nope, costume's too good. I'm gonna just going to put that over here. And maybe it makes more sense over here anyway. Like there. Storm, same deal. Although I think Storm's costume is like a hybrid of what he wanted to do for Marvel Girl and what he was going to do with a character from Legion of Superheroes. So it's like, there, got it. It works for her, like, being a goddess. Well, her original goddess costume was nothing. Nothing. What are you talking about? Yep. I have pants. pants. I, have, I have a loincloth. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Professor X like, for the, for the love of God, woman. <laughs> you mean well, for the love of me? <laughs> cover your shame. So, yeah. Anyway. You, you really, I am Professor really X. Really I bring you Puritan right? values. Yeah. Like, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I need another quilt over my lap. Giant Size X-Men, we'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. <laughs> you threw me off in the beginning when you were like, I'm your host, I Sal. Know. I was like, oh. And I'm Ethan. I'm, I'm a guy on the ben? couch. What what should, I no, I was going to say, I, I wasn't sure what you... I, and I I'm your other host, Ethan. Yeah, yeah, we're all hosts, but I wanted to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, mixing it up. Yeah, and nobody, nobody, uh, nobody, nobody did a thing. Well, nobody nobody deviated, a... so it was worth keeping. Yeah.